Caring for your collections from the Icon Care of Collections group. Whilst it's essential to be looking after your buildings, it's also important to consider what is happening on the inside. Keeping damp and moisture out will ensure that you're protecting your belongings from issues such as mold, structural changes, or water damage. Following are some top tips covering how you can care for your treasures and detailed information about caring for specific objects and materials. You don't have to deal with everything at once, as that can be too overwhelming, but consider completing a review during National Maintenance Week so you can know what you need to do over the next few months. Caring for framed works of art on paper. Avoid touching your frames, particularly if they are gilded as hands can leave greasy residues. Lift your artwork with the help of a card support underneath, avoiding unnecessary touching and possible edge damage. If the work is unframed, store your artwork flat in acid-free boxes or portfolios. Framing facts. Works of art on paper, including photographs, need to be surrounded by pH neutral conservation grade materials. Ordinary card, paper, and wood backing board contains acids that can discolor and embrittle the paper. Professional framers should ensure that the glazing doesn't touch the artwork as this can cause damage, especially if it is of charcoal, pastel, or a photograph. Choose glass rather than acrylic for art with charcoal and pastel as static from the acrylic will attract the particles. How to hang your artwork. Display your framed artworks on interior walls. Where possible, hang art in relatively dry and cool rooms to prevent mold growth and damage from moisture-loving insects like silverfish. Seal frames carefully to deter insects and avoid hanging work above a fireplace or a hot radiator. For cleaning instructions, cleaning paper requires the specialist skills and materials of a paper conservator. Much can go wrong even with techniques that appear to be straightforward, such as removing marks with a soft eraser. When cleaning the glazing on your framed works, apply a little water and alcohol to a clean flannel cloth first. Never spray the cleaning fluid onto the glazing. It will click quickly puddle on the bottom of the frame and may migrate behind the glazing, damaging both the matting and the work of art itself. Here are our top 11 tips for caring for your treasures. 1. Regular inspection and careful cleaning is the best way to prevent damage like stains, mold, corrosion, and insects. Two. Protect your valuables from light, which can cause fading and fabric weakness. Three, place your objects in a place that is neither too dry nor too damp, where the items may crack and suffer from mold. Four, if you can, avoid areas where you might get fluctuations in temperature or relative humidity, such as near a door or a radiator, or in spaces like the attic or a basement as this could cause your object to expand and contract, causing structural damage to things like paintings, wood, leather, and textiles. Five, regularly check for pests like moths, carpet beetles, and mice, when you're vacuuming is a good time to be vigilant. It's good to see pest evidence early and deal with small problems immediately, as it's key to preventing an infestation. Six, dust is an enemy. Try to protect objects from dust where practical. And remember, repeated dusting can damage fragile materials, even with a careful hand. 7. Avoid acidic fumes from sources like traffic exhaust, everyday cardboard boxes, wood, and rubber-backed materials, which can rot, embrittle, and stain nearby materials. 8. Cover the arms and backs of valuable upholstery with similar looking fabric to protect from handling and user wear. If you're going to be away for an extended period, cover the entire upholstered area in a cotton sheet to protect from dust and light. 9. 
resists the temptation to handle objects too much. It leaves marks and you can run the risk of accidental damage. 10. Lifting heavy objects is one of the most common ways to cause damage to an item or yourself. Always work in pairs. 11. Leave the repair of valuable objects to specialists, as even basic looking techniques are trickier than they might seem. Remember, safety is first. It's essential to work in a well-lit, well-ventilated room, particularly when using solvent-based products. Use only minimum amount of chemicals that you need and use it from a small lidded container. Wear protective gloves and wash your hands when finished. Be sure not to touch your face or your mouth. Put used clothes outside to allow any solvent to evaporate before storing or discarding as they can combust. Store materials in sealed containers, including cloths with wax on them. Keep materials away from heat and light. And remember, don't rush in. Before you start any cleaning work, take a good look at your object very carefully. Avoid cleaning in areas if you see any loose surface decoration, weak joints, frayed areas, old repairs, or cracked surfaces. It might be better to ask a conservator to have a look at the item for you. Some of our tools of the trade tips. First, clean as you go. Clean brushes immediately after use and reshape bristles while drying. Replace discolored polishing and dusting cloths. Keep product containers clean to avoid contamination. Be sure to organize your materials before you start. Label everything to avoid cross-contamination, especially of metal polishes. Keep dusting cloths clean in labeled sealable bags and store brushes with bristles upright to keep their shape. Think about investing in the best. High quality brushes with natural bristles can last for years. And while natural bristle brushes are more expensive, they can be more efficient and so might be worth the investment. Take care with chemicals. Some of the substances you might use when caring for your objects are potentially hazardous. And please exercise great care. Keep all of your materials secure and safely out of reach of children and animals. And a few common materials that we use include abrasive paste for cleaning some hard surfaces. Choose paste without ammonia and with the finest evenly graded abrasive. For example, prelim or Solvov Autosol that you can buy from motor accessory stores. Use acid-free or archival quality tissue paper, card, and boxes from which you can buy from department stores or art supply shops. When using alcohol, such as isopropanol or propantool, it's very effective at removing some types of dirt. Methylated spirit is not recommended, and you can buy these products from pharmacies. Now brushes. A pony or a goat hair brush will remove dust from delicate surfaces such as silver, gilding, and lacquer. Hog's hair is better for more robust surfaces like ceramics, carved wood, and copper alloy. Chemical sponges are used dry, and this picks up and absorbs or removes dirt by rubbing. You can buy these products from jewelry or silverware stores. Corrosion inhibiting bags or rolls will protect polished copper and silver from tarnishing. Cotton cloth is used for silver, while Intercept, a treated polythene, is used for a wide range of metals. Cotton buds of wool can be useful. Use any of the commercial varieties, but be sure that they are 100% cotton. Cotton or linen tape is especially good for tying up books. Unbleached and undyed tape is used to secure objects, and you can buy this from haberdashery departments. And finally, detergent. Be sure to use conservation grade. This must be free of color, perfume, optical brighteners, enzymes, and bleach, and it should have a neutral pH at about pH 7. You can use liquid detergent for, for delicate silk and wool fabrics, which you can buy in a supermarket as long as it's free of the previously listed ingredients.